few links for Odyssey Bitchute Coffee. Thank you for the recent uh, very large donation. It was quite a bit of money, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think I deserve it. Okay, so quick video because I'm going to be tied up for a day or two going up to the mountains uh, to camp with the coyotes and um, the cold weather. I was listening to a live stream and some issues came up regarding a little friction between the Phantom Menace and Comicscape. Even the topic of Indiegogo and Kickstarter popped up. And um, I want to say that, yeah, if you if you have something going on, like a comic ski thing, and you're all hooked up with Indiegogo, there is some strength in numbers, so it does give you some bargaining power if you're all uh, loyal to one company, even if it's just a little bit of, uh, of bargaining power. It's better than if you're just all over the place. It means you don't have any cohesiveness. So, um, first of all, these uh, Phantom Menace YouTube channels, they're great. And I listen to them sometimes, play them in the background. But keep in mind that they're entertainment. Gary and Doomcock are just friendly voices you play in the background while you do something else. Most of the time, you're not really paying attention to them. And, you, you know, you're not really there for, for information so much as entertainment. Do they have insider information? Probably, keeping in mind that 10,000 people work on a movie. So even if they get information um, from the big dog himself, it's not like it's a guarantee, because even unless you're dealing with a, a micro-budget movie where the one guy is really in charge of it, on a big-budget film, there's so many variables that go on that if the big guy can say, whoever's in charge of it says, yeah, we're gonna, I think we're going in this direction of the film, well, you know, scheduling conflicts and budgets and all these other kinds of filming constraints come up. It's like, it's no guarantee. There's just too many variables. So Gary and Zoomcock could fake all their sources, and it really wouldn't matter in the outcome, like the, the likely pr probability of the predictions coming true. The bigger point is... At some point, The Phantom Menace is going to realize that movies are never going to go back to normal. To hear people talk about the next DC movie or Spider-Man or some other poison bread and circuses from Hollywood, I can tell you what's going to come out of Hollywood. Politically correct milk toast garbage. Every film will be what They Live warned us about. Be good sheep and stay asleep. Don't wear those sunglasses. Movies have been globalist propaganda hardcore for like 20 years, but before that it was a slippery slope since the very invention of films. After you get deeply red-pilled, you can go back and watch old films and it's a light bulb. You suddenly understand why they put a scene in a movie. It's like, oh, this is all part of a Hollywood agenda of blonde man bad and anti-nationalism. Yeah, it all makes sense. But... It's to the point now where modern movies are watched with the globalist propaganda detectors enabled, where something like Harley Quinn is still totally unwatchable. It's just too bad. But Black Widow can still be watched as long as those internal filters are running, and you can sort of watch it and admire the technical details and the sets and things, even though you're not really, you're not, you're filtering out the propaganda. But the odds of you enjoying the next James Bond film, like you did with Roger Moore and Sean Connery, the most you could hope for is that there might be parts that have some nostalgia. But no, it's not It's not something worth going to a theater for. It's like, you know, the, the big binary, is it worth leaving the house for and driving five minutes to a theater, or even walking? Is it worth it? And you look at most films and you're like... No, it's just not. What about a free ticket? It's like, hey, I still have to leave the couch. It's just, I, I, no, it just doesn't. It just doesn't come out to be worth it. You don't want to go see a movie and get lectured to on pronouns and microaggressions. It's only a matter of time before James Bond is trans and sucks the Russian spies for information. James Bond used to be an English guy running around in a Jaguar with um, uh, Liberty devices under the hood and ejection seats and having sex with girls with weird names. In the next movie, he probably won't even be English or even a man. And yes, I thought Roger Moore did a fine job. I know everyone prefers Sean Connery, and uh, there was even guys before him, but to me, they both kind of sold their performance. Uh, and I saw those when I was younger, so it's like I didn't know any... I didn't know about good acting. It's like cartoonish stuff was probably more my thing. So I was um, I was listening to John Malin's live stream last night, and someone made a point about the Phantom Menace channels were you know making videos about crappy films that weren't getting any better. And he said essentially, 
after Disney fired Gina Carano, you should be done with Disney and all the subsidiaries of Disney. Disney is run by very bad people now. They're not going to turn it around. They're taking off the mask. They have no interest in being what they used to be. They are nothing but anti-nationalist propaganda. And that's also true for most of the rest of Hollywood. It's going to be CRT, globalist propaganda, from here on out. Especially when you consider that the teachers are sort of paving the way by brainwashing the kids in school. They are creating a receptive audience for Hollywood to further brainwash them. People are finally learning what has been going on at the schools and who is pushing it. They're finally waking up. You got Antifa because Bolsheviks have been running the Board of Education for decades. Kids have been brainwashed into a cult of Marxism. If you control the schools and media, then you control the narrative. I'm surprised that they haven't been more successful. I think the rise of message boards and chat rooms have helped keep the alt-left in check because they're always going to be shitlords. This comment talks about Rian Johnson. It's like getting a trilogy. I, you know, they have a history of failing upwards. Um, you would think that a chick who did uh, Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins, Wonder Woman 1984, would just be uh, be chastised for that bomb. Nope, they just fail upwards. So I grew up arguing with long-haired, pot-smoking hippies who look like George Carlin, who now would be called fash for their libertarian beliefs of judging people on their merit and treating people equally, at least until you learn differently. People who believe in live and let live. You want to smoke weed and join a nudist con colony? Knock yourself out as long as I don't have to pay for your decisions. But that kind of shifted in the 90s with the concept that, yes, it turns out that they do want you to pay for their ideas. Endless conflict in the Middle East, uh, health at any size, open door policies, and taxpayers paying for an increasing number of parasitical drains on a system. A shrinking tax base of contributors with a growing number of takers on a system is going to guarantee failure. And what do you call it when you have a civil failure? They can't just leave you alone. You need to pay taxes so they can use that money to destroy the nation. All the while, they make movies saying how evil you are. These hippies are old now, and they're watching the mobs tear down statues. Statues, not statutes, though, in some cases. And they wonder, what happened to the country? Feminism, liberalism, libertarianism, tolerance of Marxist people and ideas. A nation can't tolerate people who work to destroy the nation like so many insects. If you don't pull the weeds, then they spread and choke out the plants that provide food. Fighting globalists and communists should have been taught in schools uh, since 1945. But the nation didn't actively work to root out and destroy communism. So now we have Hollywood and the media controlled by Bolsheviks who are brainwashing kids. The results are the riots you've seen for the past few years. And honestly, at this point, it's a system-wide error where it's better to just split the country into tribal and ideological areas, super state power sort of thing. Otherwise, America is just going to turn into Brazil where low-level crime is a part of life. You know, people on um, motor scooters, two guys on a motorcycle run by and one just steals your whatever your purse and your cell phone. And the wealthy are going to live in gated communities with armed guards while the proletariat always suffers. Sort of a long introduction to say, why would you support Disney, Netflix, Hollywood, or any streaming service at all? Um, there are some great comments, and I'm surprised he left the comments on. Good for him. Uh, and I, I don't hate Kevin Smith. Um, I think, uh, do I make a, I think Clerks 3 will be fine. I have, I, I hesitate to make a prediction like that. Um, the bread and circuses they're feeding you, they're making, they're selling you are poison. Not everything is as degenerate as Disney and Netflix, but how many more examples of cuties or He-Man he do you need to see to cancel Netflix? I don't know if people are going to get boom mics, lights, and start filming um, skits on their Samsungs, but it's not as crazy an idea as it was even 10 years ago. The factors are, one, the tech is cheap enough that you can get started with a cell phone. You can make a skit, and you can, if you get some eyeballs on it, you can try to get a little bit of crowdfunding for the next one and keep increasing the tech as they get better and better. The other factor is how bad Hollywood is. 
Think of the talent in Comicsgate. How cool would it be for Cecil, EVS, Anna, Anna, is that what? I think it's Anna. Uh, Kelsey, Mike Miller to film a short green screen movie, like a Star Trek parody, uh, parody or whatever. They film their bits at home on a green screen and then you edit it together to make a 15 minute parody film. Hollywood is so bad now that making your own content is actually an option, even though it's like there's a lot of work that goes into it, but what else are you going to do? People are perturbed um, with Netflix. Why are you paying for it in the first place? It's like $14 a month that supports really evil people who hate you. You don't actually have to support them. You could... You can make your own entertainment. You can take back the culture and make comics, make movies, make skits, make something. Um, like, we don't actually have to pay Hollywood. The only thing, if you want change, you have to starve them out. And But it is important to talk about how evil they are, how bad they are. Keep talking about their degeneracy to spread the message to get other people to maybe rethink their, their, their purchasing power. Like, I'm paying $50 a month for all this crap. Maybe I could spend that $50 a month on something else. Just just a thought. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Again, thanks for the donations on coffee. Um, I deserve I deserve it and more. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I will see you all next episode.